So finally, some words on a basic structure of cellular mobile telephone networks. Why well, do you call it cellular net networks? Because the underlying structure of such huge networks are cells. So cells basically implement the space division multiplexing. What is the basic idea of a cell? Well, usually you will have a base station and the base station, somewhere looking like this, the base station with certain antennas and well, think of beam forming and all this, the base station will create a cell or sectors. So the base station covers a certain transmission area. That's exactly the area where we can use the system. And in cellular systems, the mobile stations communicate only with the base station within a certain cell. Why do we do this? Well, think of not having cells. Well, this would require, let's say, a huge antenna in the middle of a country with extreme high transmission power to cover the whole country. Think of attenuation, all these effects. But then we have problems with capacity. Higher numbers of use. This would simply not work. So we need this space division multiplexing using many different cells. And the more antennas we have, and that's quite important, the less transmission power we need. Think of this rule 1 divided by 3, 3.5, 4.5. So the further away you are from a base station, the signal strength drops dramatically. So in the end, we need way less energy, weaker signals if we have more base stations. So the more base stations, the better it is. The fewer base stations, the stronger they have to send their signals. And also if we have more base stations, we are way more robust. So if you have a failure in one base station, think of having several base stations. And then if you have failure somewhere, maybe you designed it in a way that the cells of the other base stations overlap and then you can still continue to operate your network if one antenna is defect, just for an example. So, and also if you have local interference, you can locally deal with the interference. So, big advantages for stra cell structures and this is exactly why we have tens of thousands of base stations in a country and not one single big huge antenna. So remember, the more base stations, the better it is the lower the output power is for the base station, but also for our mobile phone. The closer we are to a base station, the less power we need to transmit data. But sure, we have a lot of problems, so we need a network to interconnect the base stations, either fixed networks or microwave links. We have to perform something like handovers, so handovers, between the different base stations. I will come back to this in the next chapter. And we have to live with certain interference. So usually we have cell sizes of some tens to uh, meters, some hundred meters in cities on the countryside, something like 20, 30 kilometers GSM. The higher the frequency is, the smaller the cells are. So think of a wireless LAN. You cannot have huge cells with wireless LANs. The radius of a wireless LAN cell usually is something like 20 meters, 30 meters. Inside buildings, sometimes only 10 meters or even less. Think of how many wireless LAN Wi-Fi repeaters you need if you have a larger apartment or on a campus. You can even easily have 1,000, 2,000 hotspots on a campus. So wireless lands, just for example, you cannot use it to cover a whole country. But if you have lower frequencies, you can have way larger cells. This is why, for example, the police 
they use frequencies around 450 megahertz just for example to have larger cells and also to penetrate the walls of buildings so that the system still works in a basement okay so different cell sizes but if you have cells you have to perform something that is called frequency planning and if we talk about cells quite often in literature you will see something like that is this uh, honeycomb pattern we have this nice hexagon shaped cells please remember real cells look like whatever bizarre shaped things depending on buildings trees structures whatever but here to make it simpler we use these hexagons if we do not use something like code multiplexing if we use frequency division multiplexing then we have to plan the frequencies that's a disadvantage of fdm we have to plan the frequencies in a way that we do not have overlapping cells using the same frequencies and you see here for example f4 certain carrier frequency is used here and used there but we have a certain gap in between so we do not have an overlap between those two cells using the same carrier frequencies so the classical fixed frequency assignment you assign certain frequency to a certain cell and that's it but what happens if you have different traffic load in different cells so maybe at noon downtown shopping areas you need more capacity that means more spectrum more frequencies there but in the evening rather where you have the bars and restaurants so this is why we can do something that's called a dynamic frequency assignment sometimes also called dynamic channel assignment dca because we use only parts of the spectrum which is called a channel i will come back to this when i explain the second generation mobile phone systems in the third and the fourth chapter so dynamic frequency assignment means the base station can choose certain frequencies depending on the load and on the frequencies already used in the neighbor cells so neighbor cells can borrow part of the spectrum to a cell so more capacity in cells with more traffic less capacities in cells with not that much traffic so you can make this assignment based on load on interference etc and just to give you an example this frequency planning can be quite complex think of the bizarre shaped cells in real life you can cluster cells for example uh, together with sector antennas so these are antennas with this no you have three antennas on top then you have different sectors then you have different patterns different seams uh, schemes you can cluster them you can repeat these clusters etc so frequency planning it's a typical thing you have to do for systems that use frequency division multiplexing so fdm tdm these combined schemes as you have them in the classical second generation mobile phone systems like gsm as we will see for the third generation mobile phone systems we do not do this anymore and the fourth etc fifth generation systems they can do this again but in a way more clever clever uh, patterns in a clever way because there you have way more computing power to perform more complex patterns of using frequency time this also depends on the modulation schemes on how you access the medium so frequency planning that's a classical thing you have to do as a network operator depending on well where you have cities, rural areas, where you have high load, low load, etc. For the third generation, I told you, well, because there, as you will see, we use code division multiplexing, we do not need this frequency planning because all the users use the same spectrum at the same time. So not different frequencies. So we don't have to plan ourselves in this way so as shown here 
but for third generation, the classic third generation systems, they suffer from a different problem. And this is called cell breathing. What does it mean? Third generation, like UMTS, for example, systems, they use CDM, code division multiplexing technologies. And these technologies, the size of a cell depends on the current load. Who? Why this? In FDM, FDM and TDM schemes, you assign a certain part of the spectrum at a certain time to a certain user. So you say, okay, for a certain time, a certain part of the spectrum. This is a certain user. And only this user uses this part of the spectrum. By the way, this is exactly what the fourth generation LTE again does. The third generation systems, they use code multiplexing. So there, all the users, here you see the mobile phones in yellow, one in gray, all the users use the same frequency at the same time. Okay, but they use different codes. So what happens? Think of our party. You're here, you're the base station. And you understand the different codes. So in this example, you understand five different languages. Okay, the five mobile phones, five different codes. You understand them and quite important, the signals, the different signals should reach you here basically at the same strength. Then, well, you know many different languages, you can listen to the different senders, one in Finnish, English, German, Swahili, Japanese. Because the languages do not really overlap, they are not, as we will learn in the next chapter, they are not, uh, basically they are orthogonal enough. What this means, next chapter. So, okay, so now, Five systems will send you something. Well, if all the signals reach you at the same strength, we assume a certain size of our cell here, light gray. Okay, so if you tune into one of the languages, all the other traffic appears, well, for you now as a noise, but also for the other users, this is noise. If you do not understand Finnish, you will not understand a word. This is background noise to you. Now, what happens if one sender sends more data, transmits more, more energy, or let's say now party example, louder? Well, raises the voice and it's louder and louder and louder. Then as we have to use so-called tight power control, all the other mobile phones will also increase their output level. That's the same in a party. If someone speaks louder and louder, all the others will start also talking louder to each other up to a certain limit. There's a maximum output power also for you and parties, but also for the mobile phones. What happens? If a device reaches the maximum output power. So there's a maximum output power. Then you cannot send with more power. But as you are further away from the base station, the base station, if those stations closer to the base station send with more power, that means they transmit, for example, more data, the gray one is now transmitting a video. They are closer to the base station. You cannot keep up with your power level. You're too far away. That means you drop out of the cell. Or, as we say, the cell shrinks. So actually, those two mobile stations drop out of the cell. That means the cell shrinks. If the gray 
mobile station stops sending, your output power is good enough again, and then the cell will become larger again. So depending on the load in the cell, the cell will shrink and expand and shrink and expand. So that means the cell starts breathing. And for example, in the shopping area at noon, the cells shrink. And depending on your planning of the base station, users might drop out of the mobile phone network. At night, everything is fine, but during peak hours, users will drop out. This is a typical effect of CDM systems, not FDM, TDM systems, because at FDM, TDM systems, you will have your exclusive part of the spectrum for a certain amount of time. So there's no big interference between different users. But think of the party example, in CDM systems, co-division multiplexing systems, you will have this cell breathing. And cell breathing makes the planning of your network really complex. For example, you test your network and say, oh, everything is fine, full coverage, great in the city. And then at peak hours, the users complain, oh, no reception, bad con uh, connection, etc. You test again. In the evening, everything is fine. So you have breathing cells. If you want to avoid this, you have to place more base stations in the city. But this is expensive. So that's one of the problems of 3G systems based on CDM technology. So finally, some questions again. So think of cellular systems. Why do you use them? How do you usually realize SDM and how do you combine this with FDM? And what happens if you apply this dynamic frequency assignment? What happens with the frequencies available in other cells? Now compare what actually limits the numbers of simultaneous uses in a TDM-FDM system if you compare this to a CDM system. So what happens to the quality of the transmission if the load gets higher and higher and higher? What happens if you want to squeeze in yet another user and yet another user? Is there a hard limit? Is there a soft limit? So what happens there? 